So thank you all for joining us for Core Black Voices. Um, I guess tonight is um, Monique Washington. Um, I'm K.O. Morris, the BIPOC Program and Digital Media Coordinator for the Oklahoma for Equality Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, Monique, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Monique Washington and I live here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right, perfect, perfect. So. Let's let's get started with the first let's question. Um, so how was it growing up in Oklahoma and in what high school did you attend? Um, I think growing up in Oklahoma is pretty much like most people uh, of color grow up in the Midwest. I mean, I've had some quite a bit of racism in my life. Uh, growing up in a predominantly white uh, neighborhood, going to a predominantly white school. Um, my first occurrence of racism when I, I thought I was the same as everybody else until uh, the second grade, um, we lined up for uh, lunch or recess and uh, a little white boy pointed on the globe and said, uh, pointed to, to the country Niger and said, hey, that's where you belong. And that's when I was like, wow, like I went to talk to my parents and it's like, wow, I really am different. Um, and then when I was in the third grade, my aunt and uncle actually made national news because um, uh, members of the KKK set their house on fire and burned it down. Mm -hmm. um, fourth grade, uh, one of my friends told me that he can no longer be my friend because his dad said so. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I had a rough childhood kind of trying to be uh be one with my with my peers yeah so 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 also being from oklahoma you know we live in the, we live in the bible belt um, yes um did you raise did you grow up on, on religious and a religious household uh i did not um i'm not religious myself i i feel like i'm very i'm very extremely spiritual um but uh we only went to church like on easter yeah i i, I grew up um my, my, my great grandpa was um, a reverend. So my earliest memory is, is of him coming to get us. We lived in um, Osage's um, 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 reservation, just a couple miles west of, the, of, of Osage's casino. And my earliest memory is, is, is of him coming to get us every morning and us being the first ones there, last ones to leave, Wednesday, Bible school, Saturday, Bible school. So. Wow. So it, it, it was a very, um, uh, 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 looking back and seeing how my life turned out, it, it's very interesting. So, so I was just um, seeing if that played um, into, if that played a, a part in, in your life. Because I know a, a lot of um, queer Black people grow up in the church. And, and I, I was just wanting to, wanting to know that. So um, I, I'm, I'm going to take it back. You said that, um, your 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 uncle i believe it was your uncle and your aunt or your cousin um um the, the kkk um burnt um the house down was that yes. in oklahoma yes uh they lived in claremore oklahoma and this was it was in the 80s mm. um and i remember waking up uh i was i was a kid i was in elementary school and i woke up there was no one in the house but my mom left a note saying Hey baby, uh, fix yourself some breakfast. Um, your aunt Judy's house burned down. Uh, we had to go see, you know, see how they're doing. So, but yeah, it made national news, and that's when I was like, "Wow, racism is—it's real." It, it it is real, and and you also mentioned how in the fourth grade, um, um the, the kid pointing out to to the country Niger and say, "You belong here." Mm -hmm. and, and everyone made jokes about, you know, saying the word nigger and Niger and, and that continent. But I remember um, I was about 12, 11, um, and I stayed on a cul-de-sac and my friend stayed at the very last house on the cul-de-sac. And I would walk to the house and we live in duplexes. And, and I had took the, the path to go it went kind of in, in the yard. It was, it was like a path to the front porch, but also to the neighbors, which, which was my friends. And I remember walking 
through this path on the sidewalk or or whatever path to go to go to my friend's house. And this grown woman, white woman, um, had to be 35 plus. I remember her yelling at me for walking in her yard. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to my friend's house. And then she kept yelling at me. And then she called me a nigger. And she, and she this grown woman called a, a child a slur. And, and in my mind, I was, I, I was very taken back because that never really happened to me before. Like, like I, I've, I've been called names, but I haven't been called a, a racial slur, especially by a, 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 an, an, an adult. And, and, and that was very triggering for me because because mm -hmm. my friends were all white and and I didn't know how to how to um how, how to feel or how to process that, those emotions at the time so, so do do you remember how how that was for you when when that, when that kid said hey you you belong here not not knowing that that's not what their way even says but but just the fact that he felt confident and and and, and to be able to to say that yeah so i i kind of knew what he meant but i didn't know exactly until i went home and talked to my parents about it but i just remember feeling less than human whenever he said that like i didn't belong where i was and I mean, that's hard as a child and it's, it's very hard to, to try to, it, it, it's just, it's just really hard to process as a child. It is, it is. And then, and then, um, I, I'm kind of going to kind of sift a little bit. Um, so, 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 you know, being black in America is hard and, 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 and having to deal with these things as a child is, is even harder and, and, and it makes you grow up faster. Um, mm -hmm. So, so with that being said, um, when did you realize that that you know you weren't like the other girls? You 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 liked girls. I um so I know when I was when I started having these these thoughts and things about myself. I was in middle school, going to high school, and I was on the track team, and there was an older guy that went to the high school, and I thought he was so attractive, but I'm, I'm, I'm 12, 14, whatever. So I'm not, I'm not talking about it or anything of that nature. And, and I, I just remember me liking this guy, but not really connecting that, you know, I'm bi or I like guys or I'm gay or, or this is who I am. So, so what, what age and, and what, and what led you to, to realize that, that, that you were, that you were gay? Um, I actually realized that I was gay at a very young age. Um, I would probably say around five, six ish, uh, just because like I would see women and I would be like, wow, they are beautiful, like really attractive. Um, but I wouldn't feel the same way about guys. And um, as I got older, as, as you know, I mean, homosexuality is not really talked about in the black community mm -hmm. so as I got older I was like oh man like there's no way I can be gay because my parents will never accept me my family will they'll throw me out um so I suppressed those feelings for a long long time um until uh I mean I didn't have my first experience until I was in college and I still suppressed that and kept that hidden okay okay um um, a, a good kind of segue. Sorry if, if I'm so jumpy with these questions. You're um, fine. Um, you went to the University of Oklahoma. Um, what made you decide to go to OU? Which I am a big OU fan. Boom as soon as, rather die. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, uh, like you, I ran track. So I've been an athlete my entire life. Um, I used to idolize my brother. He's eight years older and he played all the sports and he was an amazing baseball player. So my parents signed me up for softball, um, playing softball. The only thing that I enjoyed doing was running the bases because I was fast. Uh, so when I was old enough to join the track team in middle school, that's what I did. I became a sprinter um, and I was a sprinter throughout all the way through high school. Um, I remember being 14 in the ninth grade 
and we made it to regionals and OU hosted uh, our, our track meet. And so I went there and I just fell in love with the campus. And I told my parents, I was like, that's where I want to go to school. And that's where I went. And that's where you went. And then yep. you decided to major in exercise um, for sob. I, I had this word down. <laughs> Physiology. Physiology. Um, yes. Um, what, what made you um, um, choose that major? And, and did you choose any, did you have a different major in mind before you chose um, to exercise and physiology? Okay, here's the thing. Um, I have always been fascinated with the human body. Uh, I mean, the human body is amazing. And it, what the human body does when put to the test and pressure um, I've always loved it. So I, of course, wanted to go into health and sports sciences, learning more about the anatomy, um, kinesiology, like what actually happens to the body physiologically when put to the test um, with stressors or with uh, uh, exercise, all of that good stuff. And so, um, I mean, it was just, it was just a given, like that's what I wanted to do. And that was my goal going into college. Um, um, and, and just to clarify for people watching who don't know what exercise physiology is, can, could you um, 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 expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, exercise physiology is basically the study of the body and how it adapts to exercise. So um, you can take a uh, non-athlete individual and take an athlete and then just study the physiology in their body whenever it becomes time for exercise. Uh, not only that, it's just learning how the body reacts to different, uh, different exposures, whether it's mm -hmm. stressors, whether it's uh, weight training, cardio, it's, it's learning more about the science of the body, which mm -hmm. I, I'm a complete science geek and I enjoy. Awesome, awesome. I love science too. That was my favorite class in, 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 in middle school and I got to high school and that went down the journey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do, do you have any, any vivid childhood um, memory involving, involving fitness or, or sports? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, was, uh, I was the fastest girl in um, elementary school <laughs> and I would always look forward to every year for the president's physical fitness test because, I mean, I would just dominate it and I loved it. <laughs> I hated those. I, <laughs> I, I did. I did. <laughs> um, so, so you graduated college. Um, and, and, and how, how, how did you meet your wife? Oh, well, this is a, a good little love story here. Um, so I graduated I love from love. OU. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> I said, I love love. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, so I graduated from college and then, um, one of my friends who was a year ahead of me in college, we had the same major. She was leaving um, from St. John Medical Center uh, here in Tulsa to go to medical school. And so she told me to apply for her position at St. John Health Club. So I did, I came back, I left Norman, came to Tulsa, applied for the job. Um, I walked in to get a job application at the health club and I saw the most beautiful girl I have ever seen in my entire life. And uh, she's now my wife. Um, but uh, I was so excited to see her and talk to her. I kind of stuttered a little bit, but she handed me an application to be a member of the health club, not a job application. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to make a sale basically. But, uh, so she sent me around to HR to where I got my job application. And the whole time I'm thinking about her, I'm like, God, there's no way I can fool this hot shit. There's no way. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, fill out the application. I'm thinking about her. Turn the application in. I'm looking for her. Um, I still didn't see her. I go for my job interview. Looking for her. Don't see her. I get the job. Day one, um, every hour on the hour, I am scheduled with a different employee um for training and so from one to two I was scheduled with her and I was so excited I couldn't wait 
and uh, she's showing me paperwork and I look down and I notice her hands and she's got a ring on her finger. So I noticed that she was married. And so I was just like, ah, that's not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> so I was a little distraught, but it just wasn't our time then. Um, fast forward a couple of years later, uh, she was divorced, single, um, had a one-year-old baby. And uh, I asked her, I was like, hey, do you want to go out sometime? And she had never felt anything for a woman before, but she uh, did for me. And so she was like, yeah, sure. And we've been inseparable ever since. And that's been 18 years ago. Uh, I, I love that story. Uh, you, uh, okay. It, when, when you said that she was married and then years later, it, it, I got back together. I have, if you're watching just from high school, you know who you are. I am waiting for you. And, and, and I hope that happens to me. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing, I, I love this story so much. I, I love, yes. love, and I just love, love romance movies. I um, need to. Okay, let, let me stop. Um, so, <laughs> so, so you, you meet your wife and y'all open up um, Physiques by, by Monique. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this was your, your, your studio until, until last Monday. And I drop by it all the time. And I, I didn't know that. Um, what made you open up your own studio? And did you ever think that, 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 that you would have your own fitness studio? Um, I, I've always been a leader and I've always, I know what I want. Uh, I didn't know it as a child growing up, but as an adult, like in college, after I was like in college working on my degree, I realized like, I don't want to work hard for somebody else. I want to work hard for myself. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to have my own fitness studio. And um, I wanted it by the age of 30, but it didn't happen until 34. Um, so we've been open for eight years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we have an amazing, amazing community of people. I mean, we're not like they're not our members, like they're like our tribe, they're our family. And we, we just have a great time. We, we work out, we laugh, we cry, we, I mean, we spin, we sweat. It's, I mean, it, it's just great. And we, we have a great community. That's awesome. And, and especially being um, um, a, a black and LGBT on, on business, um, 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 that's amazing. Um, through that process, did, did you have have any have any doubts about starting your own business? Um, about about you know being out or being black would, would this be a negative to, to having on business your, your own business? Did, did it ever cross your mind? Or did you ever have any issues with that? Honestly, no. Um, I yes, I'm black. Yes, I'm lesbian. Um, but I'm also an educated individual. And so I knew that, I mean, my wife and I sat down and we wrote our business proposal, um, presented it to our accountant, to our banker. I mean, like, I mean, we had everything together. So, I mean, I was confident going into it. Had you asked me in our twenties, we were in the closet in our twenties. And so I wouldn't have been comfortable back then, but we were in our thirties when we opened and I mean, we just haven't looked back. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and so, so you have a, a, be a beautiful family and you have an 18 year old and you have a eight year old English bulldog. Um, did you ever um, envision yourself with a, with a family as, as a kid? I always knew I was going to have a family. I always wanted a family anyway. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be with a man or a woman, but I was hoping it was going to be with a woman. And uh <laughs> Child-wise, I didn't know how it was going to happen, but luckily, I met my wife when, um, I mean, it's bad for her. I mean, she was going through a tough time, but, uh, I mean, we got together, and yeah, things, everything happens for a reason, I believe, and now our son is 19. Um, he's always introduced his uh, friends to, introduced his friends to us as Joy is his mom, and then I'm Mo, his brown mom. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been great. And as far as our eight-year-old English bulldog, uh, we actually lost her in November. Um, I, like I said before, everything happens for a reason, but I caught COVID and I was down 
hard for three weeks straight. Uh, but having COVID gave me the ability to stay home and be with her for her last three weeks of life. So, um, so that happened and I don't have her anymore. I miss her dearly, but we um, kind of got a rescue dog very quickly. We weren't ready for her, Aww. but uh, we found out that someone was going to shoot her. So mm. we rescued her. So now we have another English bulldog and uh, we don't know her age. We don't know what she's been through, but and this is our first rescue dog. So she was very skittish and we didn't really know if we were going to mesh well, but after, what are we, Boo? Like uh, seven weeks in. We're seven weeks in now and we love her to death and she can't get enough of us. So oh, things happen amazing. for a reason. They do, they do. They're so amazing. And for everyone watching, you said adopt, not sop, rescue dogs. Yes. I love it to do that because a lot of people don't. And right. that we still all practice to, to do when, when getting sure. new animals. Yeah. Um, um, that being said, um, um, you you joined OKEQ. Um, or, or, or how did you first get involved with the Equality Center on Tosa? Uh, I was, we were in our 20s and Mike Redman invited us to uh, the Equality Gala because he was on the board, still on the board. And um, yeah, so like I, I fell in love with uh, everything that OKEQ had to offer. Like, like I said before, Joy and I were in the closet for a long, long time and most of our friends were straight. So we couldn't be out around other people. Uh, mm -hmm. But after we went to that equality gala the first time, we were like, wow, like, it, like Tulsa has like a great support system. And here we are now out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, and what is your, your current role at um, Oklahoma's for Equality? So I'm a new board of director uh, on the board. Uh, four, four or five years ago, uh, my wife was on the board of advisors um, for a year. And so then Chris, uh, Brett Smith, uh, asked me to, you know, kind of look at it and see if I'd be interested. And I mean, I feel like as a Black businesswoman here in Tulsa, that I would have a voice and I would love to be a part of this organization. Awesome, awesome. And um and I and I know you do um you lead a monthly conversation on um on addressing systemic racism. Would you like to mm -hmm. talk more about that? Yeah, um actually Chris reached out to me because I've expressed my feelings about racism on uh, Facebook quite a bit. And I mean I hate to talk about things like that on Facebook, but it needs to be addressed. And mm -hmm. The first time I ever did was, um, there was just something about the killing of George Floyd that wrecked me. I mean, it completely, it wrecked me. I am a very happy, very positive individual. But when that happened, I mean, I was just, I wasn't me, I was down. I was like, there's another person of color that was murdered for a counterfeit $20 bill. Mm -hmm. well, should, I mean, would a white person been murdered? I mean, that was a modern day lynching to me and that's not okay for me. And so I, I had to find some way to express my feelings. And when talking to my other white friends, I would, they wouldn't hear me. They mm -hmm. would interrupt me and be like, but, or, or, or what about this? Or, you know, and so like I needed an outlet to express my feelings. So I went Facebook Live and told everybody like my feelings and, and how I feel. And the fact that we get berated for protests and then we do silent protests, but that still gets people every, you know, everyone's pissed mm -hmm. off about silent protests, taking a knee. And I mean, it feels like we just can't do anything right, no matter what we do. And so I wanted to get that out without any interruption. And so I went live on Facebook for that. And, and is this a, 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 um, a, 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 like, like a live stream or it's like a Zoom or is it um, um, like open to public? Like, like how, how can people, if they would like to, to, to come and listen to you speak or, or, or express their own um, opinions and 
and issues that, that they went through, how, how do they, how can they be a part of that? Right. Well, um, I did that through Facebook Live. That's how I, uh, how I, I came out with everything. I got a lot of positive feedback, which was great. Um, but now, like on my Facebook, on my Facebook now, I'll like post occasionally about racism. Uh, I don't want to go overboard. I've lost a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, I've been deleted, but apparently they weren't my friends in the first place if they can't accept me for who I am. Um, but on the on the board every month, uh, I have a discussion. We do a discussion about racism, and uh, it's a different different. It's all about racism, but it's a different topic, a different aspect each month. Uh, but if anyone wants to, you know, friend me on Facebook. They can do that as well. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Thank you. Thank you for for, for sharing that because because that is something that that we should talk about and and that people should be open to 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 not just listening but hearing and and right. and, and, and understanding what someone's coming from. Um. Right. Um. I'm kind of take it back just a little bit. Um. Um. How. When did you decide to come out, and, um, and 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 how did that affect your relationship with your family? Uh, I came out at the age of thirty to my family, and Joy and I had already been together for six years, uh, but we were living as roommates. <laughs> um, but I was tired of being two people. You know, I'm tired of I was tired of being acting straight, and then going out in public and I can't be affectionate with my girl. Uh, so one day after work, I drove out to my parents' house and I, I just came out and I, I couldn't, I couldn't physically say the words. I just started crying. And then my mom just looked at me and she said, baby, if you're trying to tell me that you're gay, I already know. And so, I mean, that was in itself. Like I was, I, I could finally breathe. Mm -hmm. I could finally breathe. And then later my dad had called me and he was like, baby, I love you so much. Um, you know, nothing could ever take that away. Um, on the other hand, speaking of the I'm going back to religion now. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, this is fine. Um, Go for it. <laughs> yeah. So I've never really been religious, but I'm very spiritual. But what really tore me away, like, like I'm, I will never be religious now, um, is the fact that my wife's father has nothing to do with her anymore because she's with me. Once he found out that we were together and actually he, I guess he thought it was a phase, but when he found out that we were going to get married, um, we got a letter, the, the couple of days before our wedding, like stating like our love is like that of a drug addict and they can't support that. And mm -hmm. I'd rather you be with, someone else that, you know, like a man that won't treat you well. Mm -hmm. And then the night before our wedding, we got another letter from his wife and it was very derogatory as well. Um, they said that they loved us, but they couldn't support us uh, because they, they'd rather, they'd rather choose their religion over their daughter and over our relationship. So to me, that, I mean, that's not love to mm -hmm. me. So um, I will always be spiritual, but I mean, honestly, group religion scares, scares me, scares the crap out of me. No, it, it does, it does. Cause um, I, I came out um, um, my freshman year of um, high school. Um, and, and like I said, um, I grew up in a very religious household. My great grandpa was a reverend. First friends that I lost from leave throughout my whole life. Um, um, my mom having when she was young, if I, growing up, if I would go visit my dad, that side of the family, same thing. I'm going to church Saturday and Sunday, no matter what. Um, so being around religion was always, was, was always a part of, of, of my being and my, and my, and my surroundings. And, and even when my family stopped going to church, I still, I still kept going. And then in high school, I was going by myself and I came out and I did not feel that same love that, that they had for me before I came out. Yeah, you know, I stopped going. And and it's something to say what how organized religion treats people and and, and, and how it can be a very um, negative tool to 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 
stop the, the, the gospel of love and, 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 and to use it as a weapon. So I, I just want to say that, and, and I know how, how traumatic that they can be for people and, and, and talking about um, organized um, religion. Religion, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, do you have any any um? No, I know my next question. Um, that being said, um, did you ever do you ever feel weird about um, uh, about being queer around other um, black people who are um straight? Absolutely, a hundred and ten percent. Um, can you elaborate more about that? Because um, I, I know as, so, as like when I go out sometimes um, and it's like a straight club and I'm with my friends who are mostly girls, um, I, I still, even though I know that I'm like, I'm safe, but I still feel, so this, this is part of me, I still feel weird about being around people, even though with the same skin color, right. once they know that I, I'm like, I like guys, it's like they, they switch, they switch upon you. And, yeah. and it's, it's a very weird feeling because here you have um, Black Lives Matter. The person who started Black Lives Matter is a queer woman of color. So here you have people fighting for your right to exist as a black person, but some of those same people would turn around and deny your existence because you happen to be queer, black, gay, or however you identify. And, and I find it very, ironic that that people do this and, and I, I just want to know how you feel about it and if you felt the same way uh i absolutely feel the same way and um like just like you i grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood and the majority of my friends have always been white and other african americans would always talk about the way I enunciate my words. And so like we would clash in that way. We would clash in the way that that um, that I'm hanging out with white people. Mm -hmm. And I never let any of my black friends know that I was gay. And like, I hate to say this now, but like I still haven't befriended a lot of my college friends um that are black because i'm scared as to what they would have to say whenever they find out that you know i am indeed gay mm -hmm. yeah it still scares me i'm 42 years old <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey we we all have those um um to, to kind of line up the mood just a little bit um did, did you play any other sports besides track uh, that was my main sport and I actually play I ran track in uh college at OU for a couple of years before I I was just a walk-on okay but, okay um, yeah. and and what was your um your your races which is just the the one the 80 sprint yeah I was a sprinter so um indoor track was the 55 and the 200 and the coach would always throw us in that damn uh mile relay uh, <laughs> Yeah, I hated that one. Um, and then outdoor, I was a hundred meter, two hundred meter, um, and then again the mile relay. Yeah, I um just a, a few a few things about track. Um, I hate running, so I don't know why I was ever in track. Um, <laughs> and it was and it was outdoor track, so it was during the dead heat of right? summer in Oklahoma. Oh yeah, and I'm like, why would anybody? pick this as a sport to run in the heat like why are we running like this is just too much I still don't like running to this day um, <laughs> <laughs> um but it bring me to my next um um question um what is your favorite form of, of cardio that is that, uh, that isn't to... running yeah I honestly like I don't run anymore I hate running um <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we own a spin studio. So that's my number one thing is like teaching spin classes and just like cranking up that music and just having a good time on the bike with our people. Awesome, awesome. I, I, I took a few spin classes and I like those. Um, my legs are in pain afterwards, but, but I feel <laughs> great the next day. Oh, but, absolutely. But, but, but spin class, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, yes. Um, what is your favorite exercise? 
Oh man. Um, I like them all actually. I, uh, I used to be a competitive bodybuilder in my twenties. Uh, and so like I had to lift heavy five days a week, cardio six days a week. Um, but now I just kind of maintain. And I, I mean, I love my number one favorite thing is to lift weights. Okay. Okay. Oh, so I, I didn't notice about you that I'm sorry. I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> Uh, you you said that you was a bodybuilder. Um, yes. What made you get into bodybuilding? And 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 what was like your bench press? I think I'm using the term, <laughs> the term correctly. Uh, well, like I like I told you before, I've always been into fitness. Like the human body just amazes me, and I'm such a science geek that like I just love just diving in to see what what you can do whenever put under pressure. And so. Um, Bench press wise, I don't really remember, but I would warm up with uh, 135, so the bar, and then 45s on each side. Um, the heaviest dumbbells for chest press, I did 70s on each arm. Oh, okay. uh, so, but um, I'm not there now. <laughs> <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> um, um, do you have, um, oh, sorry. Um, what is the best physical exercise advice you can give um, any person on the street? Like, like what will be your, your go-to advice for, for anyone wanting to get into physical exercise? Uh, number one, stop watching shows like The Biggest Loser. <laughs> I hate it when my clients watch those shows because they get so upset that they don't drop weight as quickly as those contestants do. But what they don't realize is those contestants are like in boot camp for eight hours, six to eight hours a day. They're eating every couple of hours, but it's just minimal food. Um, they're dropping weight like crazy. And my clients don't understand like, hey, they're doing this on The Biggest Loser. How come I'm not doing this? Well, you know what? You're only working out with me twice a week, 30 minutes at a time. What are you doing on your own? Number one, what type of cardio are you doing? And what are you fueling your body with? How, you know, like it's honestly like fitness is 75% nutrition, 25% exercise. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is sure you can work out in the gym. You can do a 30 minute workout, 45 minute workout, an hour workout, but there are 24 hours in the day. So you're doing this for an hour. What are you doing the other 23 hours in the day? Like Sleep is number one. Sleep is gold. If you're if your sleep is off, your metabolism is going to go down. Mm -hmm. If you're eating crap, your metabolism is going to go down. You're going to gain weight. So what are you fueling your body with? And what like how are you resting that body that you're working out? Mm -hmm. That is some good advice. It is, it is. Because I didn't know that this how they was losing all that weight or are just, you know. Eight hours a day for exercising? Oh, yes, no. yes. Count me out. Mm -mm. Yeah, and they, I mean, they have doctors <laughs> and nurses on hand because sometimes they got to get hooked up to IVs. I mean, they are working out a lot. Mm -mm. That's, mm -mm. I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> 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 um, what advice would you give to young queer Black kids knowing what you know now? Uh, be you. Be yourself. The moment I came out, I mean, it's like life happened all over for me. Um, I, I could be myself and uh, you know what, just because you're black and queer, it doesn't put you down, down here, you know? You can be or do anything that you wanna do in life. You just, I think education is key, knowledge is key, uh, surrounding yourself by the, with the, best people that you can that help to lift you up instead of bring you down um but yeah just because you're black and queer don't let labels define you like you be you you do you and you go up and go up big and above and beyond okay um and now that we have answered the questions i'm going to open it up to any of our viewers who have any questions Okay. Um, if y'all can just drop them in the chat, we can, I, I can ask them to Monique and, and 
we can give you an answer. Oh, I have a question. Um, yes. um when, when when doing cardio, um, would you say it is best to to run or or to swim your your, your cardio? Because in high school, I was also a swimmer, and honestly. I'd rather do that, but I, I was going to know what is the best way to, to, to get your cardio in. That is honestly going to depend on the individual. Um, not every body is the same. So uh, when it comes to cardio, I like to tell people, do what you like to do. Do something that you want to do. Like if you told me to go get in the pool and swim laps, I'm not going to do it. I'm not a good swimmer. Um, if someone, <laughs> if, like if I told someone to go run and they have bad knees, I mean, that's not good either. So you have to find what you enjoy, whether that's walking, jogging, running, swimming, cycling. You got to find what you like to do. Okay, okay. Um, is there any questions from our viewers you would like to ask Monique? I'm trying to think of another one. Do we have many viewers? Yes, we, we are up to 13 viewers live. Oh, Kevin's watching. Sorry. It spreads love throughout life. Um, um, would you have any <laughs> advice for, um, for, I don't know, I'm sorry. You're fine. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> do, do, do you have any, any, any advice for um for people who who are struggling to um to come out and and who who are afraid to um to tell their, their parents because um I, I will say when I came out I only told my mom and um and I really didn't tell my dad. And till 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 this day, um, even though I I live my life openly, I don't hide anything. I still haven't um sat down and had a conversation with my dad yet. Um, even though I'm pretty sure he knows if he's watching, he probably is. Um, right. But um, but for me, there was, there was a conversation that I just I I couldn't muster up the courage to have with my dad. So is, is there any any anything you would say for people like me who 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 would struggle to um. To, to, to come out to their own their parents yeah sure um i say I mean, don't rush it i mean whenever you feel ready and whenever you feel secure enough in your body to uh get the news and to understand what they have to say you know to process it um like i can imagine what i what i would have done if my parents didn't accept me so what I would say to the younger me is basically just, just wait till you're ready. And when you know that it's ready and you know that you're ready to, I mean, live your life and not, your, not, not the life that others want you to live, that's when you need to come out. And also, I mean, find someone, talk to someone older that has come out and, and kind of understand the process that they went through and that way they can kind of process in their own mind and figure out exactly how they want to do it to the, you know, come out to their parents. Wonderful. Great advice. Um, um, I have a question from, from Yan. Um, and the question says, how hopeful or not are you about the future of the LGBT community in the, in the U.S.? Or, 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 or for the, the Black LGBT community in the U.S.? Um, in the U.S., I mean, that's such a large term. Um, we can go just in general. Well, for me, uh, in living in Midtown Tulsa, my wife and I were a biracial couple and, um, we are, uh, people love us. We are very accepted, highly accepted. Uh, when we go to the rural towns, I mean, then there's like a, there's an issue there's a problem like I make sure that we don't hold hands you know anything like that but um in the larger cities in the communities uh it's 
I mean, the LBGT community, trans community, being African American, it's, I mean, it's big. I remember going to San Francisco Pride and just thinking, oh, wow, like, I'm not, I cannot wait to come out when I get back to Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it starts in the big communities and then trickles down. It does, it does. Um, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. it, it, you brought up on uh, San Francisco Pride. What is your favorite Pride that isn't Tulsa that you went to? Favorite Pride that was in Tulsa? That that, that, that wasn't Tulsa. That wasn't Tulsa. Um, I would say the number one was the San Francisco Pride, uh, but also my wife's uh, mom and stepdad uh, live in Hawaii on the Big Island. And uh, we were there one June and we actually, my wife and I and her mom drove to the opposite side of the island. What is that babe, like a three hour drive? Uh, just to attend uh, the uh, pride parade there. And that was great too. I bet you, I bet you that was a beautiful view. Oh, it was, it was for sure. <laughs> I'm jealous. Um, <laughs> is there any more questions from our, from our audience watching this evening? I, I don't believe so. I'm trying to think of one more question I can ask you. It's a good one. Oh, oh, did you have any pets growing up? Pets? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, my dad. Right here. <laughs> my rescue dog just growled. Um, <laughs> my dad is a dog breeder. So we've had, I mean, and he's a hunter. So we've had all kinds of bird dogs, hunting dogs growing up. Um, yeah, horses. Um, I'm a country girl. I grew up in Broken Arrow. <laughs> okay, okay. I grew up riding horses. Uh, so, so did I. I'm, I'm did sorry you? to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm the only child by my mom. First grandchild, first great great grandchild, whatever. Anywho, um, my mom would say that I'm spoiled. I would say I'm not. But because of the story, I always wanted a horse for my birthday. And I never got a horse and we grew up around horses. My uncle had a horse, my mom had a horse, my auntie had a horse, we all have horses, but I wanted a horse, I never got a horse. So, <laughs> so I'm very upset about that, still still am. And she claims I'm spoiled, but I'm like, I'm not spoiled because I never got a horse. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, you, you talked about um, hunting. Um, did you ever have like any like hunting dogs, like um, where the rat friend grows, the little basset hounds? Uh, my dad did. Now, he didn't have basset hounds, but he had hound dogs and a okay. lot of them. Uh, my dad is, he was an avid hunter, um, dog breeder. And then there's magazines, like dog breeder magazines, where they like show their dogs and everything. And my dad was in there. And so, yeah, oh. we're country. <laughs> hey, I, I, I love the country. People don't like it, but it's very underrated. Yes. <laughs> um, I have a question from Andy. Um, what is your favorite music music to work out to or just to okay. listen to? All right. So Andy, don't call me weird, but when I work out, okay, so I'm like ADHD all the time, constantly. Um, <laughs> so I'm opposite from a lot of people, but whenever I work out, like I like the studio to be, there's nobody there. And then I turn on like some Sade or some Maxwell. And that way I can just get out of my head. I can just chill and I can just get my swole on. Mm, I like it. I like <laughs> it. Some Sade is amazing. I'm here for it. Yes. Um, um, I have another question from, from Kathy. She said, did you or your wife feel accepted or rejected as parents while your child was in school? Um, we felt accepted, although for me, I mean, our child is white. And so I was a little leery trying to get to know the other parents. Although like my wife was always on, um, drop off and I was always on pickup. Um, I mean, but everybody knew that, that we were a couple, even though we were in the closet. <laughs> but I mean, you know, like, I mean, my son in kindergarten, he would come out and sometimes, you know, like he would like fall and he'd be crying and I'd swoop him up. And so people knew that we were a family. 
but I, I honestly like I was scared to go to like the boys was boy scouts yeah I was scared to go to things like that because I was just I was just nervous <laughs> yeah we were young <laughs> is there any more questions for for Monique Uh, okay, going once, going twice. Any more questions for Monique? I don't believe so. So I am going to say thank you for joining and th thank you for, for, for talking to me. Um, I, I I love this conversation. I got to know more about you, and I feel like it was a good conversation. And yeah, so definitely. A way to 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 end the week. Yes. The weekend. Um, <laughs> So, so I want to thank everyone, especially thank Monique Washington for joining um, our, our Coil Black Voices series, which is every first Friday at 7 p.m. And I want to say thank you again for taking the time out to, to talk to us and, and to have a good chit chat. And I hope you all have a wonderful and safe weekend. And I shall talk to y'all later. All right. <laughs> Spread all right. love, everybody. Spread love. Spread love.